one of the things that uh, that Stan did, he had a he had an isolation tank at his house, and he invited anyone who wanted to experience that to come over. And of course, you know, you you got into this tank, totally dark, uh, warm water, salty water, that floated you, uh, so that you could completely relax, uh, just floating on this water, and uh, getting no um, sensory input from outside. It was just all within that, that tank. And I don't know how, how long I was in there. It seemed like a long time. I just, I just floated off into space, and uh, I think I was probably in there for a couple of hours. Or I'm not sure. But it, it was a wonderful uh, experience, just uh, being, again, just feeling like I was a, th a thinking being and not feeling my body at all. I was just floating in eternity. And it was a, an amazing experience. Anyway, we went up in the mountains with an Indian shaman and, uh, and his family. He had six children. <laughs> they were about a year apart. Uh, and uh, and he, the shaman brought his wife, and he uh, performed a, a ceremony that he said was necessary to protect us all, because he was going to call on the spirits, uh, and uh, and he gave us peyote. We we ate peyote, and whoa! Once you got over the uh, nausea, almost everybody got somewhat sick to begin with. Uh, it, it just filled you with energy, and again, it put you in a state where you were you were just being. You weren't thinking about anything. It was just you were existing with a, a high, highly developed sensory input. It was amazing. He, 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 his wife and children sat in a circle which he had prepared for them. He said it was uh, a safe place for them. They sat there for, I don't know, six hours probably. Uh, and uh, and I, one of the things I did, I got caught up with a marimba, the, one of those shaking things, you know. And, and I, I, I remember walking around shaking it and, you know, feeling the rhythm of it and everything. And then I think, well, I, I, I'm going to put it down. And I would think that I had put it down. And then the next thing I knew, I'd be, there I was shaking it again. After a while, it really had the feeling that it was shaking me and that it wasn't my choice <laughs> to put it down. And this went on for hours. Um, also, that same night, there was a full m m eclipse of the moon. And as the shadow came across the moon, th there was this silence settled over all of us. I, nobody made a sound. And like there were about... 30 of us up there and we watched the shadow and honestly had the feeling that that the world was was being blotted out the darkness was taking over and uh, we watched and it was this long it, period when the moon was completely blotted out and then finally it peeped around one side of the shadow and there was this incredible rejoicing. It's like everybody got up and started dancing and, and uh, celebrating the restoration of, of the universe. And, uh, you know, I've never had such a, 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 an amazing feeling of, of joy and relief. And, uh, you know, like, like the world was just this incredibly beautiful place. Anyway, that's, we had a lot of uh, conscious, good consciousness-raising experiences. A lot of them had to do with, with yoga and meditation. We learned various techniques um, and did a lot of, of yoga exercises and so on. I came away from that six weeks just floating. Is and that when you got your first massage? <clears throat> well, no, I had, uh, my first massage was one of those same kinds of experiences. It had happened the first time I was at Esalen. Um, I had never been massaged in my life, and uh, and I, w I was told by people that, you know, this is something that you should experience. So I made an appointment, 
and this this young woman showed up that I I didn't know, but she was a regular masseur at the, at Esalen, and she proceeded to start working on on my body, and it again it totally blew my mind. I started to, <clears throat> I started crying, sobbing. I couldn't stop myself. I had never experienced that kind of touching, and that level of exquisite joy from from being touched as I got from from her her massaging me, and the, and it went on, you know, for for an hour, more than an hour, and uh, and I just floated off that table. But it, one of the things that led me to do was take up massage. I I went to. Uh, San Diego to Ipsby, the Institute for Psychostructural Balance, and studied um, body work for a year. And I did a lot of massage work myself. But uh, the best and, and the, the seminal experience for me with the joy of, of massage was that very first massage. You said she walked in, didn't say a word or something, and no. and didn't stop you while you were no. crying, and and uh, and that was fine, you know. I, I mean, I, I'm like most guys in our culture. I, um, I don't like to cry I, in front of people, <laughs> you know. It's like not manly and all that stuff, but it didn't matter in that case. And uh, when she had finished, she just walked out and left me. And, uh, and I finally pulled myself together. And uh, uh, I've had a number of those kinds of of experiences. And, and over the, uh, another really important one was um, when I, I went to a, a month-long workshop in California. Um, and uh, we camped out, and every day we we did intensive uh, meditation and uh, yoga and again at the end of that month i was uh, i was changed forever in in some significant ways the uh, you know it's it's like I, I awakened i was awakened by all of these experiences to a potential in myself and in human beings to have a much, much richer connection to other people and to the universe. And uh, I think, I mean, I don't, I don't practice an, any of these things regularly, but I, uh, I have the memory of, of, of how it feels, and it has uh, stayed with me, the, the changes that it wrought. Uh, 